Hey everybody, let's talk about the TC33 MBP tire changer here. So this is a center clamp tire changer here with dual bead loosening rollers. So, but as you can notice on my, uh, on my control pendant here, uh, I have my roller synchronized. So my upper and lower roller adjust at the same time. My switches are right up here on, on the pendant themselves. Uh, and they are two stage switches. So I'll show you how that works here in a minute with indentions. But uh, this is kind of a quick overview. I have a, the first stage brings it in contact with the tire and the second stage engages a pump that not only brings the roller down but in at the same time so it sort of has an automatic indention function. So and that's, those are all on the same two switches here uh, on my control pendant. Outside that though it's a, it's a, a levered tire changer so I have a standard levered mount demount head here and this one is the, the BP so I have the bead press option here on the side. To, uh, to help keep that tire tracking in the drop center on, on those more difficult assemblies. So let's go and show you how all these things kind of go together and change a tire. Like I said, it's a center clamp style, so I'll mount, uh, mount on my platen here. One of my, uh, you know, engage one of my traction pins with the, uh, with the lug hole. Clamp it up. And again, my roller movements are synchronized, so I'll kind of just set everything off of that top roller. And when I press the second stage of that button, it's gonna go ahead and start to, to break that bead. Now I'm indenting, or I'm uh, um, bead breaking counterclockwise here, as you can see. That's important, I'll show you why in a minute. So with my top bead broken, I can go ahead and break my bottom bead with the same motion. I have a mirror right over here on my, my bead breaker column that shows me you know, what's going on with that roller, its position, make sure the bead's broken. From there, I can go ahead and change my, uh, start changing my tire. I'm gonna wanna monitor my TPMS position like I would on any machine. Uh, bring my lever down. Reach in there, grab that bottom bead. I'm gonna keep that tire in the drop center. A little bit of tire paste never hurts, especially if it's a, uh, you know, if it's a flat repair that you're doing. Uh, you know, not all tires are discard tires, so if you need to go back on with the same tire, um, it's a good idea to go ahead and. and uh, Give it some some tire lube on uh, on bead break. Keep my my top bead in the drop center here. Now to do that, I can use my bead press arm. Then I can bring it around and use my bead press arm to maintain that over under position. I have variable speed with this machine, so I can rotate just as fast or as slow as I need to, depending on the the circumstances. So. So I've got my tire changed. I can go ahead and inflate. Inflation is my left side pedal here. If I press down hard on the second stage of the pedal, it's actually gonna activate my, my built-in blast inflation. So I also have that on the machine for those balloon tires, those truck tires. Sometimes have trouble taking air. Now, a couple of things that I mentioned that are important to not only damage prevention for the tire changer, but for the wheel and tire as well. They're just going to make your life easier all around. Um, I mentioned bead breaking here counterclockwise. That's important because if I go to bead break clockwise, that's going to move my, my entire roller column kind of out of contact with the wheel. So I always want to bead break counterclockwise with this machine. Um, of course, beforehand, make sure I remove all the clip weights from, uh, from the, the outside and the inside face of the wheel. That, a lot of times, will, will mar up uh, rollers and heads pretty quickly if, as, you know, as they catch on those clip weights. So another thing to keep in mind is adjust this mount head perpendicular to the wheel. I have a decal that shows me exactly what that looks like here. So I'm gonna, if I'm working with wheels on the, uh, the extreme small range or extreme large range of the machine, I might need to adjust this. But I have three positions here that I can adjust this primary arm to uh, by means of this knob right here. So most wheels, probably 95% of the wheels, you can just leave it in the middle position and it's fine. But it's good to know that adjustment is there. 
So one of the things you might run into is the bead bunching up during bead breaking. And I'll exaggerate that to kind of show you what, you know, what that looks like. Uh, but basically what will happen is that your, your roller really will fail to actually break the bead. It'll just kind of wad the tire up like this. Obviously that's not a correct roller setting anyway. So what you like to do, or what I like to do, is uh, bring my roller down, but pull it in at, at, as a kind of an intermediate step here just to make sure that that roller snugged up real nice to the wheel. Um, and then go ahead and start using my, uh, my hydraulic pump to break the bead. That ensures you get a nice, you get that roller nice and close to the wheel. You get a good solid indent and good, a good bead break every time. And of course, drop center. I mentioned drop center as, as the, you know, very, very important to keep the tire in the drop center, um, especially that top bead mounting step. Um, I have my bead press here, of course, to, uh, to facilitate that. And uh, another tool here that I'll show you in a little bit, a little more difficult tire that'll really, really help, um, you know, give you some extra arms when you're, when you're working with tough assemblies. All right, so some general kind of maintenance and upkeep things with this tire changer uh, are basically just looking at the, 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 the plastic and the rubberized parts, um, what we would call the consumable parts, basically, things like the roller and the mount head. So obviously, like, like most machines, you want to wipe, you know, the tire paste and kind of debris off of them. And while you're doing that, just check for like chips and gouging and things like that, cracks uh, on these rollers. And same with the mount head, you know, just make sure there's no, uh, it's not cracked, um, chipped, deformed in any way. You know, your platen's nice and clean. And you usually just kind of wipe the, you know, the whole machine down just to kind of make it look good. So those are really the only kind of wear items on the machine to, to keep an eye on. Um, longer term, you want to kind of make, an, make sure you're looking at the, uh, the water separator at the back. Uh, just make sure that, you know, we got oil in it and, uh, and we, we drain that water separator periodically if you got, uh, you know, if you're getting condensation in there. It's about all you need to do for basic maintenance and upkeep on this machine. All right, so I have here a 22 inch diameter uh, wheel. This is a reverse drop center wheel. And one of the easiest ways to tell is by looking at the, uh, the, the valve stem, how it's sunk way down into the wheel. So I'm gonna need to, uh, 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 there's a couple different clamping methods I can employ here to clamp this wheel. Um, the first of which is to use the, the rubber platen pad here. Um, so I got a rubber pad here cause I'm gonna need to clamp against this front face of the wheel. I have a, a nice protective rubber pad here that I can put down first. And then, of course, a pin protector as well. Again, a plastic piece that helps prevent uh, damage to the lug hole. So I can put these two pieces down and just clamp this wheel upside down uh, on the platen as is. One thing I want to do too, though, before I get too far ahead of myself here, as you can probably see if I move the wheel, um, is since the stack height's going to be fairly high, I want to move my platen down to the lowest possible position there. That'll That'll help me out, help me help prevent any uh, kind of clearance issues with, uh, with clamping this up. Again, I want to kind of watch my, uh, my lug holes, line up one of the traction pins, or line up one of the, the lug holes with the traction pin. From there, I can just clamp against the back side of the wheel uh, like normal using my standard cone. So the second way to clamp this reverse wheel would be to use the flange plate. So I got my flange plate here configured with five pins. Obviously this is a five lug wheel. Um, these are the long pins actually. So um, depending on the wheel design really is gonna dictate how you clamp it, whether or not you use the, uh, the platen pad or you use the flange plate with long pins, short pins. It really depends on the, uh, the wheel design and these aftermarket wheels have a multitude of designs. So. So I, but I, what I want to do is make sure that I, I fasten this to the wheel first before I go to put it on down on top of the plat. That's going to make my life a lot easier. I don't have to line those pins up with the tire in the air. So again, I have my platen height here set at the lowest position. And I'm going to go ahead and clamp upside down here. But only I'm going to clamp on um, right down on my flange plate instead. So nothing is touching that wheel except for uh, what touches it on the car. It's in the, in the lug seats, obviously. From there, again, clamp like normal from the top with your, uh, um, you know, with, your, with your standard quick clamp. Might have to give everything just a little bit of a shake to kind of get it all to line up just right. 
All right, so now that I have my tire clamp, the changing process is pretty much the same as it is for any assembly. I wanna make sure I bring my, uh, my bead roller in nice and close to the wheel edge and bead break counterclockwise, pulling up on the, uh, on the pedal. Same thing with my bottom bead. All right. Now on these tougher tires, you might have to actually use your bead press arm to make a little pocket for the uh, for your for your lever and to help kind of get the, the demount head into position. And that bead press is the most versatile piece on this uh, on this changer. Like I said, from here on out, uh, you know, but other than the clamping. Changing is going to employ a lot of familiar techniques. Just with a lot larger tire. All right. So like I said, the, the, the changing operation here is really a lot like it is um, for any other tire and wheel. Um, it's just obviously a larger tire and wheel, and we have a special provision for that clamping. Bring my mount head down. I'm keeping that tire um, tracking over the top of the, or the leading edge of the mount head and under the trailing edge of the mount head. I have an optional roller here that I can, I can equip the machine with, flip that down, and as another point of traction, and to help kind of keep the tire in the drop center, I have a, uh, a traction bar here I can put down. So I can employ some, some technique and some accessories here to really make my life easy on these much, much tougher assemblies. Machine has plenty of power to get it done. Like I said, some technique and some, uh, some accessories make my life a lot easier. All right, just a couple extra accessories here to use on these this really extreme aftermarket wheel and tire, but still fairly easy to change, um, even in a mobile setting. So I'll go ahead and inflate like normal. So just like that, we got this fairly difficult tire and wheel changed here on the 33M in a mobile van. So um, obviously a very capable machine with the, you know just a little extra technique and some extra accessories. So for more information though on our other equipment, visit hunter.com. Thanks for watching.